Okay, we're going to go over some of the features of the new ProFide Logger Suite. Um, this software is really kind of designed to make the whole tuning process much easier. Uh, the software can go through and filter data out based on some predefined uh, parameters um, so that when you open these logs of, as you can see, there's a lot of driving going on here. Um, it, you don't have to kind of go step through step by step and make adjustments and then go back and say, well, did I make those changes already or not? The software just goes through, filters stuff out based on the, the, the templates that you set up and then it gives you the averages of where you're off so it makes it very, very easy to go through and dial in a calibration. Uh, I've actually you know, been able to completely dial in drivability on a car in just a couple of drives. Um, just make you know go through and log it, open it up in the software, and let this software tool do the calibration changes for you. So we're going to show you how all that works. Um, the first thing that you're going to notice here that we want to go over anyway is these groups right here. So all of the signals that are available in the log are automatically grouped in these groups for you, and it's all predefined. And then we've got these shortcut templates here that we can use to just filter out the stuff we don't want to do. So for any particular things that we want to do like fuel tuning we can click on that and it gets rid of all the stuff that's not related to fuel tuning all right so first of all in these groups I want to show you how you can edit these signals and basically make these signals lay out however you want them to so we're just gonna right click on one of the signals here map so it pulls it up and it tells us what we're currently set up for but within these groups you'll see that all of the signals that are defined in those groups are given a position within that group and then the groups are shown here so you can go through and see how you want to configure that stuff now if the signals aren't there in the log they just don't show up so your positions are always in the same spot you always want them to regard regardless of what you've logged so it makes it very easy when you open a log there's not a lot of configuration to do once you've got things kind of set up how you like everything just kind of falls into place all right so up in here we've got the ability to assign our precision, how many decimal points we want for that specific signal, what color we want, okay, the thickness of that line. Uh, most of mine are all set to one. I like having a couple of the key components like RPM, manifold pressure, and throttle uh, set to a little bit thicker, so they kind of jump out more in the in the log, which you'll see here in a minute. There's where you assign your what group you're going to be in, and then the position within that group is this position here, okay. Your Y, min, and max for the scaling that it's going to display on over here is set up here as well. The units that it's recorded in, what you want to display them in, and then you can also add filters if you want to add filters to smooth out some of the lines. That's, that's also available in here as well. So every time you open a log, that's the layout for that signal, regardless of what which one of the templates that it's in. It just comes up in that, that's the layout. That's the scale it's gonna be in, the color, so you always know right what you're looking at. It makes it very, very simple, okay? So you'll notice that anytime I move my mouse over one of these lines, it highlights, okay? And not only highlights here, but it also highlights here. So you can quickly see where you're at in a log, okay? The other thing is when you're over in this area, if I want to see where any one of these are, it lights those up as well. So it makes it very easy to find the data you're looking for. Now we've got 148 channels on this log right now. Okay, so it's obviously pretty overwhelming. You can't really see what's going on. There's just everything's everywhere. So we're going to click on a template here for fuel tuning. That opens up just the things that we've kind of determined are related to fuel tuning. Now, you may not have some of these signals in your log, and so they'd just basically be in the way. If you know, if you didn't have EGTs, you'd have eight flat lines here for zeros. So if you want to get rid of those, you can just check show, and it hides those. And so if you don't have those in your log, you don't have to look at them. Same thing with staged injection. So now we've just kind of gotten this down to two different categories of stuff. Your basic engine stuff, and then the fuel-specific stuff. So if you click on this grouping box down here, it divides those out. So now we've got our basic stuff from this log up here and then our fuel stuff down here so now we can go through and we can really quickly see that we need to make changes to fuel in here based on targets okay so that kind of makes that really easy if you want to change your different part of the log we've got this zoom extent window right here that you can drag it around you can also just slide this over by grabbing the timeline here if I want to zoom in let's drop this back down to the standard view I up arrow zooms in down arrow zooms out left scrolls left, 
right arrow scrolls right, control scrolls faster either direction. So that's how you can kind of move around within the within the log to uh, get to the data that you want to look at. Okay. So now I've got all this data in here, and I can sit here and I can go piece by piece and okay, make my changes here and scroll down and make my changes here. But as you can see, there's a lot of different spots here that I would want to look at. It's going to be very time consuming. And you get to spots, of, okay, did I make that change or was that, you know, what was going on during that change? Maybe it was lean because I was, you know, moving the throttle a little bit. My self feeling's not quite right. So it makes it difficult for a novice tuner that doesn't really understand how all this stuff kind of works together how to go in and make those changes so they wind up making changes to the wrong tables and they wind up chasing them tail because they're making changes to Excel fuel thinking it's Excel fuel when really the the V map wasn't exactly right where it needed to be at that particular throttle opening or manifold pressure so what we've done is we've added the ability to open a calibration here within the software tool so I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna pick a calibration to open real quick And what's going to happen is going to pop open a window here that's got the VMAP. So anytime you open a calibration, it automatically goes through and runs the data to compress for every one of these maps throughout the entire log. And it does that based on these filters down here. So we've defined we want to do the VMAP. Okay. We have our RPM index for that VMAP, the Y index. All this is pre-configured. Now you can make your own custom maps. That's why you have these drop down boxes so you can create your own maps. But in this particular case, this is just gonna we're just gonna go over the, the predefined one here to make things a little bit simple, otherwise this video could wind up taking several hours. So we don't want to do that. So we've got both banks added together and then divided by two to get an average for those two banks, and then that's divided by target to get our percentage of error. Okay? So that's what this is gonna do. Alright. Then we have if whether or not we use this filter data and then the number of samples that has to be hit at each site before it considers it valid data to use. So in other words, if it goes over a site once or twice and it's skimming through it, we're going to ignore that. We want to have several samples at that site saying, hey, we've gotten that data and this is the average that it's off over a number of samples to make sure that we're getting good, accurate data, not transitional data where things can be skewed. All right. So within this filter, we can add other things. So first thing I want to do is just go ahead and hit the calculate button, and that's going to run those numbers, and it's going to show you here's the VE map that we've opened in the in the uh, from the calibration software. And you'll notice as I scroll through here, this box tells me some things. It gives me the RPM location, the throttle position for the y-axis. This is a throttle uh, throttle based pressure compensated map. Uh, it's out of a zero one. And then we have the number of samples at each one of those sites. So as you can see over here, I have no data. I haven't, haven't hit that spot in this log at any time. There's zero samples. But down over here, where I did most of my driving, you can see there's spots where it's 300, 120, 127, 257. It tells you that it's hit those sites a lot. So we're going to get some, some good data from that. Okay. The other thing I want to do is if you click on this reference new graph, it shows you what the changes are going to be. Okay. Now, Obviously, this isn't right. So, what we've got is diesel fuel kicking in, and it's reading lean. It's telling us we need to add a bunch of fuel there. Okay, so that's that's bad data. But to the novice tuner, they may not necessarily know that, especially when looking at the data. They're like, "Hey, why is this off?" They keep changing it, so they don't understand the diesel part of it. So, we're going to make this real easy. So, we're going to come in and we're going to configure this filter data. So, delta TPS is less than negative 0.02. I mean, it's going to ignore the data that's anytime it's less than that. So if I'm coming back from open throttle and I'm under decel, it's going to ignore that while the throttle's moving. This is constant decel, so it's not going to filter that out. And then I also want to do when it's greater than O2. So anytime basically the throttle's not steady state, I want to ignore data. Then I also have coolant temp less than 140 degrees, so if it's under warm up, I want to ignore that data. I can also add manifold pressure to get rid of this. So I didn't log whether D-cell fuel cut was active, so I can't use that as a filter in here because it's not in the log. But I do know that my manifold pressure has to be less than a certain number to trigger D-cell fuel cut. So in this particular car, uh, you know, it idles at around minus three PSI. It's got a pretty decent cam in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and filter everything that is anytime map is less than uh, let's just say minus seven. Okay. 
And then if I want to do, you know, startup, if I want to get rid of any hot start stuff or cold start stuff, just because there might have been something odd going on there, and I don't want that to skew my VMAP because that's handled in the starting, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to also filter out time since run when it's less than, let's just say, 60 seconds. Okay. Then I'm going to hit my calculate button, and it's going to filter all that data out. So now those D cell lines are gone. We've got one area right here that for some reason is picking up, needing a lot of fuel. That could be tipping right off of, you know, minor tipping uh, where your D cells or your delta throttle is not higher than these values. Or it could just be that the VMAP is a little bit low there. So I'm going to ignore that for right now and just let's go into the other stuff and we don't get too crazy on this thing. So we can filter that out here in a minute. So as I'm looking at these changes, I can look at them a few different ways. So right now we've got what it wants us to change is there and what we had. So we can look at the difference table and then all these one values are stuff that hasn't changed. That's where we didn't get enough hits within the samples. If I set this to zero, we're going to get some hits up here, but it's going to be one or two. and It's not going to be enough to really filter out what we want. So I'm going to leave that set to where it is. So this is telling us the percentage changes that it wants in these spots. Okay. The other way we can look at it is in this table. This is what the VE numbers are, and this is what the computers calculate them that they should be right in here, okay, based on those changes. So we have all the information to drop this without sorting through this log right into our calibration. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this map. It's telling me it's on the clipboard. Then I'm going to bring in the ProFi software down here. This has a stay on top function, so you can click on that and then it won't be on top. So this this way you can have this on top of this tool and be looking at your changes, which we'll kind of go over here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the 3D map. And I've already got this on my clipboard. So I'm gonna hit Control A to select all, and then Control V to paste. So now you'll see that I've got those changes that the software told me I need to make right in here. So I'm gonna put that back in the back. I'm going to bring this up here, and then I'm going to put that other map back on it, move it over here. So now I can look at both at the same time, okay? So what, I, what I'll do is I'll kind of just jump back and forth if I want to make a bunch of other changes and see, like right here, I notice right away that this isn't changing. I've got, I don't have enough samples here for this to change. So that's staying where it is. But the cells around it, I do have enough samples, so this is probably going to be too low for what I really want here. So now that I've got these changes in here, I can come back and I can start, based on that data, I can kind of start smoothing this out, getting rid of some of this other stuff. Like I know this peak's not real, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. But some of these other values I know are real, so I can go in and just real quickly smooth this out and finish calibrating this. And, and I've got a bunch of data from all that driving that I've just now done without sorting through it. And it's pretty much all, you know, once you smooth this out, it's ready to go. Now there is a feature over here where I can blend this, okay? So if you'll notice, if I start clicking blend, this takes a minute to do, there's a lot of data to crunch through. Okay, it's instantly smoothed this out, okay? And I can just hit that a few times and it's gonna keep blending that back in until it's back smooth. So now I've already made my changes. So now, if I want to take that and copy that, now I've got my map. I've still got this one peak i got to deal with here. but So you can see really quickly, you can get a calibration dialed in. So this has got, this thing's all blended in nice and smooth. So rather than bringing the choppy one in and doing it the hard way, the old fashioned way, I'm going to say the hard way, it's still relatively easy, but not as easy as this. So We've got all of these predefined maps in here. You can calibrate mass airflow, idle control, all this stuff, doing the same thing without combing through literally hours of data. I mean, uh, that, that particular drive was about a half an hour long. So it, it, there's a lot that you would need to normally go through. So as you can see, the tool itself is a pretty powerful tool. Um, the next thing that we're going to go over in the next video, because this one's getting kind of long, is I'm going to start talking about how you can compare cal files. I'm, I'm sorry, log files. You can compare them 
like at the track and see where you're picking up. So look to the next video for that one and we'll, uh, we'll start doing that one next.